Okay, in the last video, we talked about the basics of using visual aids during a uh, roleplay scene to uh, make your Roll20 roleplaying experience a little bit more interesting. Um, it could be tough roleplaying online, especially if you don't have web cameras. Uh, players can have other tabs open, other monitors open. Uh, they could be playing that sweet Animal Crossing on their Switch uh, without you realizing it. A lot of stuff could happen. Um, so having lots of bright, uh, interesting things happening on the screen is a great way to keep their interest in the game. So last video we talked about how you can hold down shift and hit Z to take any asset on the screen and throw it up uh, full screen in their face. Uh, we also talked about creating handouts and how handouts can do the same thing, uh, but they are persistent. So they stay in the player's journal for a long time uh, until you delete them, honestly. Now, maybe that is cool, but maybe there is an area that they're going to visit a lot. Uh, maybe it's a town or a quest hub. Uh, maybe you just want to go the extra mile and make an area uh, a bit more interesting while they are visiting it. Uh, you can make a location scene. So this is a page in Roll20 that you just kind of fill up with interesting stuff for the players to look at while they are roleplaying. Um, it's a nice change of pace from constantly having your roleplay occur on your landing page. Uh, this is also our first video where we're going to talk about making a new page. So let's jump into it. At the top of the screen, you're going to see uh, this blue ribbon. We're going to click it and it's going to do a drop down. You're going to see there's our start page. Now we can create a new page. We click the button and it makes a new page. Uh, before we jump over to that page, we could do a few things to it. One, we're going to call this uh, The Farm. All right, uh, we're going to call this, uh, hold on, The Farm. And then hit Enter. There we go. Um, we're also going to go to the page settings and check the settings. Uh, you can see that it opened up at 50-50 with a dark gray background and light gray lines. Everything that we told it to when we initially built the Roll20 page in the first video has finally come to fruition. We don't need to worry about dynamic lighting and stuff because this is just going to be a fun page full of like scrapbook imagery to kind of give them an idea of, hey, this is what's going on here. So we're going to hit uh, OK. And we can go over to the page by clicking on it. Now you'll notice there is a player ribbon here. The players are still on the start screen. The players are still seeing that screen. Only we are seeing the farm. Uh, this is very useful for the DM to be able to go to other areas while the players uh, are not there because it gives you a chance to check the map, prep the map, make sure everything on the map is ready to go. So for this particular um, scene, we don't need it to be 50 by 50. That is really big. So we're going to go ahead and reduce it in size. Uh, let's go with, I don't know, 28 by 18 seem to be working pretty good uh, for our new start page. So we'll do that again here. All right. Uh, now we can zoom out with hotkeys enabled and basic zoom settings in place. I'm going to hold down Alt, use my mouse wheel to zoom out a little bit. There we go. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop from my assets folder uh, a nice paper textured background. So let me drop that down. Anytime now, Roll20, you got it. Yeah. All right. And I'm going to uh, drag it until it is the size of the map, because I want this to be a full background for my map. And you can see that I'm changing the size and scale by grabbing a hold of these little blue dots that are on the side here. There we go. You also notice that it's kind of grayed out and stuff. Uh, that is an indication that that is currently hanging out on my GM's layer. And if you look off to the left, you see the second icon down says that I am on the GM's layer. I want this asset to be on the map layer. So I'm going to left click and then right click, bring up this menu and send it to the map layer. Cool. Now I'm going to go to uh, the map layer and I'm going to start just throwing cool pictures on here that would sum up uh, the first scene of the adventure which is 
they stop for the evening at a farm to rest. Now, in the previous video, I already uploaded a bunch of this stuff, so I can go to my library and drag it over from here. If it's on my computer, I will go to the assets folder where it's stored and drag it over in that way. Uh, so here we go, bringing out this field of wheat so they can kind of look out and see that field of wheat. Uh, I'm going to bring out this old farmhouse. There we go. So they, you know, there we go. And then we got to bring out the farmer and his family so we could have that going on. So let's see. Uh, this is a good time to teach you that you can copy and paste from one page to another. So at the top where it says page toolbar, we're going to go there and we're going to switch back to the start page. Now I have these guys hidden here from the last video. So I'm going to go to the GMs layer so I can grab a hold of them. And I'm going to left click, drag, and release. And that allows me to select the whole group. Um, now I can actually use hotkeys to control C and copy those guys. Now if I go to my toolbar and jump back to the farm, I could go to my map layer and I could uh, paste them in. Sweet. Um, I don't need the forest on this map, so I could delete that. Uh, and then I do want these guys to be bigger, so I can select them and start kind of scaling them up. Now, you could see here a few things. Uh, one, they got lines all over their face because they're still, in, you know, still showing up. And two, by putting them on the map layer, I'm going to have to keep toggling between layers if I wanted to use the Shift-Z technique uh, to show which member of the family was currently speaking. So I can grab these and move them to another layer. Um, just like I did a left click drag to select a group, I can also hold down shift and then left click as many as I want to group select them. While they are selected, I'm going to move them to the token layer. And then I am going to travel to the token layer as well. So it's it's pretty interesting. There's a farm. There's the wheat out in the field. I don't like how there's all these grids. So I can get rid of the grids two different ways. Um, I'm going to go to the settings for the farm. And I can either turn the grid off completely because we're not going to be doing combat. So we don't need a grid. Uh, or I could lower the opacity on the grid so it doesn't show up anymore. So the grid will still be there but um, it won't show up. Now for this one, we don't even need a grid, so I could just remove it. And now things can just sort of freely move around the screen as they see fit. And if I wanted to, I could add some, you know, animals or other stuff that would make a farm uh, more interesting. So I could go and, I don't know, add a goat. Yeah, adorable. All right, I could add like some sheep, just, you know, stuff that would be like fun to look at and interact with and that sort of thing. Um, and I could use this to sort of flesh out the location a bit more. Um, if it was a city, I could include like a city map uh, if or maybe even a regional map and a city map. There's a lot of things I could add to this page uh, to make it more interesting for the players. Uh, speaking of the players, I would definitely, when I take them over to this map, I would encourage them to drag out their miniatures and maybe even scale them up a little bit, right? So that they can see their character art and see their miniatures on this map. And as they uh, sort of interface and interact with the people, you know, John and this farmer might be talking. So I kind of bring them up to the front uh, and move other people out of the way. Just a little bit more visual aid to help people um, feel a bit more immersed. Because again, playing on Roll20, not the same as playing in person. In person, you have your raw charisma and magnetism to draw your player's attention to what you're saying and what you're explaining. Um, here, you do have the gravity of your voice, but you also um, you know, could benefit from having these visual aids to assist you. So that is how you would build a scene in Roll20. Um, a very useful tool, but totally optional. 
Uh, in the next video, we're going to talk about actually making uh, a map, uh, like a battle map. So that'll be the next video. See you then.